everyday life and what you do with it. That's heaven. So every day you waste is, is the biggest sin you can do. That's awful. Yeah, I know. That, and that is like purgatory in hell right here, right now. You don't have to no. die and suffer forever because you're suffering right now forever. Unless no. you well, a real place have to decide what you, place. you want to do and you need help for that. You have to stop with your doing the same laundry list over and over and over again. Because it hasn't been serving you too well. Has it? Um, well, I have felt better for almost a month, but, and, and I have made this house worth a lot more money, but it, I was away from any social life pretty much besides. Well, come on, you, you've been away from the social life for the last seven years. You've had a little, you had a few splurges here and there and, um, yeah. And, but mostly you, you have been by yourself, buddy. And, and that's not good for human beings, you know? We're not meant to, you know, be in that, that way of being. So it's, it's not meant for us to be that way. So we shouldn't be that way. Yeah. Tom, that means you need to get a life. You need to decide. You have enough, you know, I mean, you've made movies. You've got a lot of degrees. You could teach, you could teach online, you know? So that is um, the thing you could do, you know? I'd like to have a social life. If I'm teaching online, that's more being by myself. Then go to a college. But you could start working at a college online so they could say, yeah, this guy's all right. And then you could go um, there in person. Well, I don't know if I really want to teach at a university anymore. I used to when I was younger want well if I got the job I guess I would but I don't know. I'd rather go to LA and be an actor. Then go to LA and be an actor and realize that you're gonna have to pay the dues for like five to eight years. No, I already did that. I was there for I was there for almost eight years. And then they will go, So what have you been doing for the last thirty? That's somebody's entire life. Or not my entire life, but... Well, when you left California, how old were you? 27. Okay. So, 27 to 40 what? I'm actually 45. Okay, 45. So, yeah, roughly 20 years ago. I shouldn't so say, you, though. You, you spent feeling... half your life just I, doing the laundry list. I get the feeling from God, like, because of my soul is kind of innocent and kind... I'm supposed to act kind of like a boy sometimes, even though I have I have boys and a girl. I have three kids. I'm not supposed to act as manly and older. I'm supposed to act like almost like a boy or a guy, like a young. You guy. were you were their father. That's what you're supposed to act like. Yeah, but I get the feeling from God to keep my mouth shut about my age if it's around like police officers and people like that I'm supposed to act more boyish and younger than them and stuff I don't know why it's like my personality and my soul it has something to do with my soul but there John, was a time all you have years to be ago, is yourself just be yourself a couple buddy. of years ago I had to act older and look older and look my age because I had acted too young I had acted too young so I had to tell everyone my age and then now I'm not supposed to say it as much because I think it's okay for me to look and feel younger or because of my, how my soul is. But a couple of years ago, I started looking older. My my eyes looked older a little bit, and I grew a beard, and um, and I felt like I was like I had to say what my real age was to to tell the truth about it, even though to me it sounded older, and I would have liked to feel like I was like you know twenty eight years old or twenty something years old or, th or or maybe 32 and then instead I had to like tell the truth about my age I'm 43 or 44 or something like that John that you're you know that's a very young man you're not over the hill I guess so but I'm still like I have like a soul that's more like boyish and it's weird even around Rowan 
He said, you sound like this on the <laughs> Not really, but like, you know how teenagers sometimes they have a deep voice. Like, you talk like this. Yeah, yeah, it's called their voices is changing. Yeah, but he's, he's a, he's still like a baby. He, 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 not a baby, but he's a, he's like a child. He's a child because we're, they're still children until they're 20 years and old. 15, John, in some in, states. In the Bible, in the Bible. And in some states, um, Children can declare themselves as a free citizen from the uh, strings of their parents' control. And um, so it's it's somewhere around 15, 16, a child can be a grown-up. In the Bible, it says they, they shouldn't go to war until they're 20 or older. And all these other places, it says they're not, they're not a, a responsible, like an, they'll go right so to What part of the Bible says that? And who says 20, that? Then they have. Then they're. Then they're a man or a woman. Who who says that? The Bible. Where, the but Bible. I don't know. You might be. You know, somebody might be able to marry somebody who's younger if they're a little older, if they're eighteen or something like that. And the and the um and the man or woman was a little was older or something. Yeah, but but Doctor Lee, you know, Doctor Lee. He did that. You know, he was a rock and roll star. But that could be that creepy. He, he did that, and he married his cousin. You can meet somebody who's 48, who's a woman, who feels really young, or somebody yeah. who's like Madonna, who sometimes looks like a teen, who uh, is like 62 or something like that, or 64. Did you ever hear that Bible passage where it says, uh, for every season there is a turn, turn, turn? Did you ever hear that in, yeah. in the Bible? I, I, I've heard the song, but I haven't heard it in the Bible. I didn't know it was a Bible. Yeah, it, that's one of those guys who made the song. They got that whole song from the freaking Bible. Huh. I mean, really, the whole song. I'm not making just a video on that it now. That little concept. Now you know? I'm videotaping us. Uh, I've been, I just turned it on a little while ago. Uh-huh. Oh, that's good. I was going to look up the Bible quote every, every season there's a... There's a a turn, like the world turns or something. For every season, there is a turn. Yes, as the world turns. Yep. Mm -hmm. Turn, turn, turn. Shakespeare uh, talked about um, in um, <sighs> the Dutch Prince. I keep coming up with Camelot, but that's not it. Hamlet. Hamlet. And Hamlet, at the very end, his buddy says, we want to know, isn't it great? And, he, and Hamlet goes, no. And um, what's wrong? And he goes, the tomorrow, and the tomorrow, and the tomorrow. Meaning, that's kind of, we, we either step up and do our best with each tomorrow, and that's great, or we end up doing the same thing over and over. Did you ever see the uh, movie um, Groundhog Day? Yes, with Bill Murray or something. Yeah, yeah, Bill Murray. yeah, it was one of my favorites at one time. I liked the way it was written, and it was when I used to be a, like in film school. I watched it. So, what did you like about the script? It was just interesting how it was different from a normal script, and it replayed that same thing that he went through in that like, same day, that hours. same twenty-four hours, and and it seemed like he might have been at it for you know. Five or six hundred, or maybe a thousand days before he got what the story was. He, he probably repeat in that movie. If you kind of look at it, you know, it changed. He changed so much. It probably took him a thousand days of doing that for him to really change as much as he changed. Because he was a. So, what do you think of Bill Murray before they got to the, the Punsutawney uh, town, and they were coming from the big city? And um, he was talking on the cell phone. So, you know, and the director, that nice girl that, uh, you know, Bill doesn't even see, and, and the cameraman that makes him look good, who's driving a car, you know, and, and that's the story about Bill. He doesn't see anything but himself. And it takes about a thousand days of doing it over and over and over and over again that he uh, learns about it. And, and John, that's about you. You probably spent a thousand days going on and on and on and on. Maybe it's time to do something. And you don't have to, you know, God 
gave you your life for you to decide. You don't have to worry about you, you meet a nice young lady that you're, you're oh, born oh. again. <laughs> and don't even don't even think about sex. Just have a good time with them. They're not, you know, a artifact. You know, they, they're another person. I have a good time with them. You know, you don't have to have sex. You don't have to fornicate. You can have, you know, nice relationships. I think maybe Danica will like me again or something. Or okay, John, but like you have to realize you you just you know made a decision to do the same thing over and over again that you've done for the last at least 10 years. At least I wasn't no. fornicating or in lust and then... Uh, okay. I, I, at least I did. You, 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 know, you know, tell yourself that. I did yeah. mess up sometimes. I, I did sin or lust or, or, or stuff like that sometimes. And you should have enjoyed it instead of feeling guilty. No, I had to repent for many years after that. Uh, do you really think God wants for you to repent? Sometimes. But where in the Bible does it say, there's nowhere in the Bible does it say that it, they don't even talk about that kind of redemption. They're talking about you are so in love with Jesus Christ and what the word is that it changes you from the inside out. And you don't need to have a um, transactional you know, business plan for this, you know, but that's what most churches are, you know, so. You, can it's, you are the decider, buddy. You don't have to do the same thing over and over and over again, you know. You can do something different. But I would say, I would take the next, oh, 60 days at the very least, I mean, you've got a nice keyboard up there, a computer. Start writing some uh, screenplays about what you have experienced. When did you meet yeah. Danica? When did you meet Danica? 90 what? Write screenplays here? Yeah. Why not? I know. You can rent it out to people who want to write. That's a great writing um, little nest. I'm pretty good at screenwriting. Start doing it. And just take what you know, and that is your life. I can you know? do that more than as many videos, because I've been doing like 20 videos in a week or two. Right. Or something. I mean, I mean that's okay. It's kind of entertaining, but... Uh, and you have all of the, the yeah. wherewithal to do it. you got the internet, you got the cameras and the computer. I mean, you can knock off 20, no... no no wolf, you know? Write the screenplays instead of making as many videos. You got it. Oh, yep, that's, that's, the, that's what I'm saying. And do the screenplay from starting when you were... What grade were you in when you were first made fun of as being a pump? Uh, I guess like the... <laughs> Fifth or sixth, fifth grade, a little. It wasn't that bad. I was like on sports teams in the fifth grade. Well, don't even go to start at fourth grade, right? Go back, sit at your keyboard, let your mind blank out, and go oh, back I to fourth grade to and just grade. start typing what shows up on the, the end grade, of your fingertips. In the third grade, I thought this girl, I had a crush on a girl, and she didn't like me. I thought maybe I could go out with her, but I didn't know how to talk to any girls. Okay, and then start there. Start at third grade or second grade. Not first grade, but start at second or third grade and go with that. And 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 build upon that oh. from, from that point all the way to today. No, you I know? want to be how and, I, I and am now. I'm telling you, you could have at least 20 screenplays that go bam, bam. I and mean, that's what... Um, studios I want to feel like a child. I want to be how I am now. Okay, so, but how you are now is a creative man, and so sit down at your keyboard and write the screenplay, right? Starting from when you were in second, uh, two years oh, old, no, second, second grade, mean, second grade on, and just when you are there in second grade, be that, you know, and you aren't that second grader, but have the second grader come out of your fingertips and write the script because, John, it's in you to do it. You've got the skill. You know what's, you have good taste of, of what a script should be, but you just got to do it. Mm. 
No one's going to write it. You are. I mean, why do I write all the time? Because, A, I enjoy doing it. You know? You need to just enjoy your life minute to minute. Now, you don't have to go and do this or do that, fix this. But no. Meaning, I enjoyed the school. I got there. I did, a, I did a few things. But then I just kind of had my little school and, and, and different events and things. And then it was just a warehouse, you know, but that I would come back to, right? And be full of stuff. And it was like a, uh, oh, what do you call those things? A curiosity shop. You know, you see other people's photographs of their grandparents getting married in the 1880s and see, um, you know, their child's birth certificates. And, and you look at someone else's history and you go, wow, right? And that, if you write... The, the film script, from that point of view, that's the audience. I think so. I want to work out more, but because I'm... You so can still work out, John. There's nothing wrong with workouts. So just get up in the morning, right? Do some yoga stretching. You need stretching more than anything. And not bulk muscle. And, um... But bulk muscle ain't bad, you know. Uh, but not the gigantic 40-pound things because you're ripping your muscles. No. That's not, you know, and maybe when you're 16, you know, those muscles can grow back stronger, but not at your age, buddy. Yeah, they do. It, it, it helps you to for everything to be stronger. That's why buddy, I'm just uh, well, you know, This conversation is totally about you being but the it, decider, it's about right? Following God everything you do, you are deciding to do it. So there is nobody you can blame. You can't blame your dad, I'm your sorry, mom, her more your sisters, your dad, me, God. You can't blame anybody. Ow. Our souls are more important, so that's the reason why I don't prioritize my body. It's not as important to prioritize my body as, you know, it might be fun to imagine that I'd look in my you know, look really good, but I look good enough now and I leave it up to God and Jesus. I, I, because our souls are way more important than our bodies. Our bodies, our bodies are going to get old and die. And you, and you, you're the one who started to tell me about that. Yes. But uh, action speaks louder than words. So go get to it. You know, um, this is, you're in a perfect place. You have the experience. Like I said, what you, all you have to do is write about yourself from second grade on. And you'd have an amazing book career slash, and then it would be in movies. And you might even play roles right? or direct them. Who knows? But it has to come from the script first. All movies come from the script. Right? So any movie that's any good, doesn't matter the special effects or even the stars or any of that, it's the script. And, and living off of the characters. Right? So... Anyway, that's what you, you, the winter's coming. You've got firewood. If electricity went out, John, you could get a a photo thing at uh, Harbor Freight and a few car batteries and hook your computer up to it and maybe a few lights. And that would be good for you if you didn't have, well, you if it was snow, you could throw food out the like, snow. I could that. get a generator for like $200 or $400 if I need Yeah, but you don't want that. The noise it makes and, and the fumes it makes is not good. You just put it outside and learn an extension cord inside. Right. But the deal is, John, uh, is to experience life without electricity. If the, well, if the power goes out, you can hook a generator up to your, if you had enough money, you could get those rich people, their power doesn't really go out because they, they hook a generator up to the electric, the main electric. The problem with, the problem with that. Yeah, you can do that. I mean, I've wired, I don't know, hundreds of those, you know, rich people, little um, blowout shelter with a generator outside. And, you but those? At, at a certain point, you because if you are living in a residential place, you can only have so big of a tank to run that generator. Natural gas or, or uh, would be the, that's what most people run their generators on, natural gas, because when it runs, it doesn't make the gasoline stink. It's less toxic. But um, if you ran that generator 24-7, the, the legal tank you could have would last you maybe 11 days running. Right? So, and that's why 
instead of having a generator, you get some batteries and a couple of photo cells. And when it's sunny, it charges those things up so you can charge all your electronics and uh, a few flashlights, and that's all you really need. You know, so. you get a solar powered thing to run yep. your electricity on. Yep, yep, yep. That's what all the smart kids are doing. You but John, the real, but before you do any of that, that's just getting in the weeds of life. Who cares about it? I don't need it. I the, have thing that, the thing that you need to be is honest with yourself about what you want for your life. And just don't go back into the uh, laundry list of Danica and the kids and Jesus, God. No, act it out. You know, if you really yeah, want your, your family back, there are a lot of things you need to do before. First of all, you'd have to definitely get yourself. You want to be with Yannick and the kids? Only way that's going to happen in, in every which way is yeah. that you become who you really okay. are, right? And to be the real John, not the guy on, you know, John. Hi, I'm John Birmingham on YouTube. Hi, that's okay. You yeah, you're not that, that guy, but the real John. And you have so buried the real John. I know he's in there. I see him. And I'm trying to help him out. You know, but these other things are in the way. And um, all they'll do is waste this life away. Right? And so, you know, go for the gusto. Go for, you know, But I would suggest that you, you, this, you're going into a winter instead of going you to L.A. To to, uh, and then blowing, to... you know, five, ten grand and coming back in a month. Stay there. Learn how to, you know, get those woodstoves fired up because, John... What do you mean by go for the gusto? I go said, for the things that I really want to do on Earth before I die? Yeah, or that would... No, no, That's no. no. The things that selfish. would... No, no. The things that would put you in service to love's co-creation. You know, God's... Unconditional love and Jesus' forgiveness. Yeah, that's something. Uh, be an artist doing artists. that. Every artist that, you know, every filmmaer that that's ever made a great do. film, that's what they were doing. Every painting person. I mean, you know, your your family, that's how they lived a life. Your mom, your father, they both lived an extraordinary life you know, that most people don't live. And their parents were even more off the hook. You know, your, your dad's father, police chief, you know, come on. But your mom's. Uh, parents, you know, the, and her father, you know, built the United Nation building and, uh, and had a band on the side and did painting. And, um, her mother, you know, went to, um, you know, the big art school in New York and, uh, has, you know, the whole house is full of stuff your grandma painted. Just, she just kept knocking it out, you know, really, truly amazing. So, that's where you come from, John. That's what's uh, in your gene pool. That's what you have uh, been given. And so you can take that and do whatever you want. When you do it in service to love's co-creation, you can do anything. When you see guys make really amazing films or music or art or anything, it's because they're in that state of serving love's co-creation, right? Instead of just talking about it, right? So when you say love's co-creation what you mean is god's plan for you and your will that god gave you to do it yep yep exactly and, and really it's the, the word will is a inappropriate adjective what you should really use is um oh faith faith is the strongest of all those action words because it doesn't have to have any belief you just have faith in it because see belief will let you down every time but faith you just keep serving it not a problem it's always there for you seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take Mundo. that's exactly it so that's service and loves co-creation you know you are um you're bending your your will really and um having faith in love's co-creation that, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the right, not do the right thing, but do my best. Look at this. I said this in a video the other day. This is pretty amazing. I said that you can always get stronger while we're still alive, even in this life. But, it, and, and I didn't really understand what it meant, but um, um, it, it, this says, Isaiah 40, 31. But those who trust in the Lord who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. 
They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. They will walk and not faint. So John, you know what that all means? That when you trust God, you'll you'll have enough strength to go on. When you uh, not wh- just go on, John. Um, do your best. When you have faith in love's co-creation and Jesus' unconditional forgiveness, um, that is um, where you are in service, right? And um, and so you don't have to believe, or you know. Um, it, it's just going to be. The more you you uh, work in service to God's love, the better things get. But you you let the darker side always slip in. You got to say no. No, I don't. You know, I don't I do sitting, that. I don't you know, do that. that. Like, like, do is swipe it. You know, like on your phone when no. the, the phone number. You just swipe it up. That just it shows up there. Bing, just like your no. phone rings and it says scam. You know, probably. You know, just do. And that's all you got to do with the bad thoughts, right? Just whoop, because everyone has them in one degree or another. And that's because our society, our civilization is so warped and, and corrupt. Not to saying that we're not living on the garden to be, but we are, you know? Not to say that we're all of God's children, because we are, but not just all the men and women, all the animals, you name it, every, all the phyla, you know, all them, and that's what they call all our relations, right? Everything, every insect, every, everything. On God's finger, because God made this, and then when you start Here's a realizing good. that God created everything, that includes Satan and terrible things and all the above, and so praise God. It means that all of those things are vehicles for Protect us to us from learn, you. and that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. And we're supposed to learn to love Very ourselves much. and each other. Right? Here's we're a good to love ourselves and not put ourselves down, and 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 look at who we are, and embrace that. I mean, you know, that's why they anything that can separate humans is used to do it, like race gender um and sexual um you know um proclivity and none of that stuff should uh, i mean the uh, supreme court has already said that none of this stuff matters you know people are people that's you know how we need to be this and says the- every time they want to control the masses they just rile that up so the best thing we can do is be our best and in every situation, in every day, in every way, take the peace, not, not the anxiety, not the fear, not the anger, but the peace of the universe and make it stronger. And so that's all you got to do. You don't have to, and all the other stuff, getting back with Danica, you know, having, uh, going to California, having a career, da 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 all of that will come. You just have to keep God's unconditional love in your heart Jesus is forgiveness in your head and both those the love first has to be for you before it can be you know like when parents got on the airplane okay. um, and they give you a little thing showing you need to put your oxygen mask on before them and then otherwise you won't be able to put it on anybody and that's it for you you have to before you oh. can do Jesus work or God's work or anybody's work you have to come to Jesus that's why they say this come to Jesus about who and what you are and that that's okay. Whatever it is, it's okay. Your family will support it 100%. All you have to do is be yourself and move forward. And you have so many gifts, so many talents, and so much, um, you know, bona fides, so many degrees that you can do whatever the frick you want. I want to see where it says it's in the Bible, you can be kind to yourself and it's not being selfish like the devil is selfish. I'm going to look it up. Oh, this says... Yeah, yeah, you need to look it up. Yeah. This says, don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. That's a good quote for for, for everybody. Yeah, don't is, love money. What, what, what is that? Where did that come from? Hebrews 13, 5. And who was saying that? I guess God 
No, I guess that was, that was in a different tent. Oh, no, so maybe you, you, uh, whoever wrote that. Thirteen guys, but it's a very prominent and solid thing that we all can do to be our best, and that kind of again goes back to um, you know many points in the Bible that speak of the individual needs to do their best. They don't have to be perfect. Jesus said this: you don't have to be perfect. Just do your best. That's all you got to do. Yeah. Don't worry that you don't have enough money. You don't need or anything. Just do yeah. your best. You know when you know he said yeah. you know the only way into that. But we're supposed to work. A paradise is through me. And what was he saying about that? Why do you think he said that? Because you have to love God and do what God wants on earth, and love God a bunch to be able to, and be, you have to be just like Jesus. And the way to heaven is is through the Son. Um, and there's no sex about it. There's nothing selfish about it. No, no, it's no, God, no, there's God's nowhere self. in there that says sex is bad. Nowhere. No, 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 no. no but nowhere. lust and fornication is. No, but again, I told you what fornication was. It was the description. But between a man, of, and a husband, and a wife. It had nothing to do about, uh, you know, lots of people having sex. No, it had nothing about orgies or or any of that stuff that wasn't even in the Bible, but it sure was good in the movie. Um, so the bottom line is no. The bottom line is all about the we and me. Instead of being all about you, it's about the we and you, right? And so the more you can build up that connection between all your relations, and that means everybody, um, that's when you will, because everybody does anything amazingly, yeah, they're pretty smart. Yeah, they're pretty talented. Yeah, they, they got it going on, but still, so do a lot of other folks. But what puts them over the line is they realize it's not about them. And so they kind of embrace everyone in the community and people get a jolt. And so they really look at the idea or the film or the art and go, wow, right? So that's your job. You have all these gifts, all these talents, all these everything. And instead of talking about yourself, instead of talking about your laundry list of I, I want this, I want that. I want to go to L.A. I want to be a star. I want to, to get back with them and get the kids. I want it to be the way it used to be. I want it to be, you know, it's not I've, time. I've been content now for a day or two with where I am in, in life, where I am. That's good. And so you embrace it. Singing or not or whatever, I've been... You just don't stay there. I'm afraid to say it, but, you know, because I don't want somebody to say, who are you to get to feel better than me or something like that, and then they want me to feel bad because I said no, I felt no, good. No, 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 only a moron would do that, no. Any, anybody who is a good, you know, who is a human being who is empathetic. But that's not how. That somebody else is doing better than That's not are. how anyone would do and to me. Just talk about that, you know, you're supposed to share everything. It's all about the we and me, not about me. And, and and so nobody's going to say, oh, that person's feeling better than me at this moment, so I hate them. No. I mean, that's a child, that's a person who has no real experience, that's a person who is totally focused on themselves. You know, they are um, all about uh, themselves, the me, instead of the we. So, you know, that is, um, you are at this really blessed point where you can truly... Um, become the guy you want to be. Everything in your life can work out, but it, it won't happen by you just go, I want this, I want this. You go out and do it. You want to hear something that sounds kind of weird from the yeah. Bible? It, this is a, this is from the Bible. It sounds like a weird little thing I started to read. It says, But if you have gone astray by being unfaithful to your husband and have defiled yourself by having sex with another man, at this point, the priest must put the women, the woman under oath. These, the woman under oath who has been unfaithful to her husband, saying. So what, what part of the Bible says that? It says the the priest must put the woman. This is where it gets weird sounding. Uh, under oath by saying, "May the people know that the Lord's curse is upon you when He makes you infertile, causing your womb to shrivel." John, and your, and John, your, John, John, John. And your abdomen to swell. God never said that. And if anybody's religion says that, and your abdomen, they're misquoting. And your abdomen to swell. 
Where are you tell me where that you're getting that little quote? Where where did that come from? Who said that? It's the Bible. It's a uh, no, number. No, that is the Bible. You told me numbers, the came from, which was a really a righteous one. Where did this one come from? Numbers five twenty. <laughs> numbers five twenty. Yeah, it says this, and this happened to Danica. This happened to Danica. I just realized it right now. I thought it sounded weird, but then I looked at what the words really say, and I was like, "Wow, this really happened to Danica." Her stomach has gotten kind of big, and her body's in okay shape, but her she has a big stomach. Maybe she's pregnant again. No, no, she's not. But it, it it's kind of I really had to stand up for her health so she would be okay. But it, it says a virgin birth. Maybe that's a. It Maybe says, if you bad. if a woman commits adultery in a marriage, the Lord's curse is upon her when he makes you but infertile. No, it no made, married to I know, but here's what like when we were married, married, this was back in 2008 when she committed adultery on me one time. And it says it causes her womb to shrivel and her abdomen to swell. And that's why her stomach is big. And then it goes on to say this weird stuff. I wonder, I hope none of it happens, but let's see that this is the Lord's curse upon her. Now may this water that brings the curse enter your body and cause your abdomen to swell and your womb to shrivel. And the woman will be required to say, yes, let it be so. I'm going to read it. He got off the phone. I'm going to see what this says about what ha what's going to happen to Danica because she cheated on me. And the priest will let she then the woman will be required to say, yes, let it be so. And the priest will write these curses on a piece of leather and wash them off into the bitter water. He will make the woman drink the bitter water that brings on the curse. When the water enters her body, it will cause bitter suffering if she is guilty. Whoa, that sucks. The priest will take the jealousy offering from the woman's hand, lift it up before the Lord, and carry it to the altar. He will take a handful of the flour as a token portion and burn it on the altar, and he will require the woman to drink the water. If she has defiled herself by being unfaithful to her husband, the water that brings on the curse will cause bitter suffering. Her abdomen will swell and her womb will shrink. Oh, that's terrible. We're going to make another baby. We we got to make another baby after that. We made Ivan. And um, she made a baby with another man after that. And then her stomach got much bigger. Uh, a little bit bigger. Not that bad. It, it just sticks out a little bit sometimes. Uh, and her name will become a curse among her people. That's terrible. Because my mom didn't like to hear her, her name when, when I mentioned her name in text to my mom. Her, her name will become a curse among her people. That's that's terrible, but if she has not defiled her, it's not that bad. It's just a curse among her people. Like her name will sound like a curse, like a curse word. But if she has not defiled herself in his prayer, then she'll unbe she'll be unharmed and will still be able to have children. This is the ritual law for dealing with suspicion. If a woman goes astray and defiles herself while under her husband's authority, or if a man becomes jealous and is suspicious that his wife has been unfaithful. The husband must present his wife before the Lord, and the priest will apply this entire ritual law to her. The husband will be innocent of any guilt in this matter, but his wife will be held accountable for her sin. I don't know about the testing to see if she told the truth or not, but I did find out after a year of asking her relentlessly, she'd get angry and didn't want to talk about it and blame me, and finally she told the truth that she had sex with somebody, and her stomach did get bigger and swell up a little bit. And she doesn't show herself in videos as much. Sometimes she looks pretty good. Um, it's not that bad of a thing. Um, she only did it one time. I had lusted after women in my heart, but I didn't. I wouldn't have gone out there in real life, and that made us feel worse. And then she she went out there to get me back because I lusted after other women, and she she was with a real man in real life. But I didn't do it in real life. I didn't commit real sexual immorality. I got a bitter taste in my mouth right then. <clears throat> okay. Okay, I'm going to turn this video off. <clears throat> this is John Birmingham. Bye. Praise God. Praise Jesus.
believe in God and Jesus and you'll be saved. That was me and Al talking about some Bible stuff. I'm going to go. Bye. Check out more videos on my channel. This is, you know, who. God gets all the glory, not me. Okay, bye.